Dr. Park, you have a very impressive background. Would you please explain for our viewing audience a little bit about your um, professional training and your experience? Sure. Um, I attended uh, Harvard College for Anthropology, and after that did my medical degree and my school of public health degree, a master's at Columbia University. Uh, after that, I went back to Boston to train at the Beth Israel Hospital in obstetrics and gynecology. And um, I've practiced uh, OBGYN for 14 years and now anti-aging for about seven. Well, anti-aging is our topic today, isn't it? So let's start with this basic question. Why do we age? There are multiple theories on this, but uh, only one really has kind of passes the smell test for me, so to speak. Some of them, some people say, well, you get old because you aren't busy enough, which seems silly because we all know active seniors. And then there are other things like the cells get junk in them. But I think that the most um, fundamental theory is that our stem cells uh, have telomeres, which are the ends of the chromosomes, and they shorten every time a cell divides. If the stem cell telomeres get too short, then you get DNA mutations. And so I have come up with this theory, like a stem cell theory of aging. So I believe that it's a truism that if your stem cells age, then you age. And that's what I think uh, leads to that, is the telomere shortening. Well, I think that leaves open the question. We need a definition of what is a stem cell and what is a telomere. Okay, very good. A uh, telomere is the repetitive sequences on the ends of all chromosomes. They're like candle wicks or firecracker fuses. And they're put there in all plants, animals, so as to protect the cell. A cell copies, it shortens every time. But the stem cells are the ones that are endowed with this enzyme called telomerase, which re-lengthens them. So it never gets to the fuse at the, the, the bottom of the firecracker. So stem cells are immortal, and stem cells are able to run off a copy of themselves and a differentiated cell. So the way our bodies work is most of the cells are not stem-like, they are not immortal, um, and you have these few cells scattered throughout that are like queen bees in hives. So all the cells around them are identical to her and are just genetic clones or drone bees, if you will. Are you saying that there are parts of our bodies or certain organs or cells within our um, organs that, have, that live longer than others, and that determines whether they're considered to be regular cells or stem cells? Right. Well, this is a very unclear area, but basically, the, uh, even the idea of stem cells is a little bit nebulous, but the standard definition is they're immortal because of this telomerase, the re-lengthening of the telomeres, and um, they divide asymmetrically. So yes, it's pretty much accepted that most of the cells in our body are not queen bees, they're just drone bees, and that um, we have specific queen bees throughout, generating nerve cells, retina cells, heart muscle, immune system, everything is based on the stem cell uh, mechanism. Well, Dr. Park, I think it's fascinating from what I have read and seen about how these, uh, these cells replicate and how the telomeres uh, are physically attached to the end of the chromosomes and so forth. Would you go through that process to help us visualize what actually happens when cells replicate and replace themselves? What happens to the old cell in that process? Sure. Um, all plants and animals and fungi have these long linear chromosomes, like little bow ties. So they have to be capped. Otherwise, an end looks like a break, and then the cell will try and connect it where it shouldn't be. In other words, it can't just be naked like that. So the ends of all chromosomes of life on Earth that are complex have these ends. They're called telomeres. And it doesn't matter what the sequence is. We have six base pairs. Plants have seven. Some fungi have 21. So it's just like blank tape leader. And it, just, it just is there. And every time a cell divides because of the mechanics, you can't get the primer to the very end. So you always lose about 50 to 100 base pairs every time a cell divides. So every generation gets shorter and shorter to the point where if they get exposed, then you get DNA damage because the uncapped end will connect to another uncapped end and then you get all this damage um, that occurs. So what's the effect of the damage? Well, the effect of the damage is called replicative senescence or getting old by copying. 
And this happens in all our cells. So, you know, if you put cells in a dish and feed them, they don't last forever. They die off after what's called the Hayflick limit, or, you know, 30 to 50 divisions. But um, if you have a stem-like cell, then it can stay alive forever, like Henrietta Lacks cervical cancer. And that, the reason they do that is because the telomerase enzyme in every cell, if it's switched on, can actively relengthen that fuse and keep it from ever getting naked and, and damaged. So then what does this mean for the theory that as, the, as you age, your uh, telomeres get shorter and shorter and shorter, and each time there's a new replication, it's like a, like a clock, a biological clock ticking, and that your life is getting shorter. And when, finally, when you get to the end of the number of little uh, base pairs or whatever it is that you were talking about, the telomeres get shorter and shorter, and they don't replicate anymore. Is that basically the theory? Well, that's the fact. I mean, that, that's just true on a mechanical level for all cells individually. So um, the protection of our chromosomes is, is very normal. So my paradigm is that you don't really need to age and that if you maintain active telomerase activity, then you're not going to age. So it's just a matter of activating our natural healing to a higher degree. For example, nature has done this experiment. It gave some children only one copy of the telomerase activity. So those kids die of premature aging at about 12 or 13. With two copies, we make it to about our 80s or 90s. But imagine if you had two higher functioning copies. You know, there's no telling how long you could live, or even three copies or more. Well, you mentioned uh, some of the benefits that you're seeing in your clinic. What are the empirical results that you've seen, and maybe some of the, uh, you know, the uh, anecdotal uh, stories that we've heard? In other words, what can we expect to see if we start to take this, uh, uh, the substance now? So the question is, what can we expect to see when we take telomerase activators or other adaptogens? And the answer really depends on the person. So it's a sort of like a Jack Spratt thing, so to speak. If you sleep too little, you'll sleep more. If you sleep too much, you'll sleep less. And that's the nature of an adaptogen. The effect will depend on what you need to get healthier and more regular, you know? So um, that's kind of an evasive answer. The, the, the true answer is that most people develop deeper sleep patterns and they are more rested. And uh, as a result, probably of that directly, uh, maybe other factors, they just feel more peaceful and, the, and, and they feel better able to cope with stress. That's just anecdotal, but it seems to be almost universal. Uh, other things include sports performance and healing. That appears to be somewhat accelerated in most people. And also the growth of organs that usually wane as we get older. Hair, skin, nails, those tend to grow faster and stronger. Well, those, um, those results would be of far more interest to most people than the impression of well-being and energy. I mean, we read all the time about some new product that's been produced that is an energy booster and so forth. And, but I think the primary uh, fascination of the telomerase, telomerase activators is the fact that this might actually uh, extend life significantly. So when you talk about darkening of the hair, and you didn't mention it, but I'm aware from the literature that many people are reporting a smoother skin, the wrinkles are going away, and so right. forth. Now we're talking, you know. So these symptoms are really of great interest to people who are looking at this and saying, I wonder if this is worth pursuing. So in that category, do we have anything other than just the hair and the skin, anything else that's directly related to what we associate with aging? This is where we start to get into problems with preconceived notions because there's nobody that, you know, the 2009 Nobel Prize was for telomerase activation. It's an established fact that telomerase is essential for stem cell survival. No one will dispute that. No one will dispute that cells have replicative senescence. And nobody will dispute that shortening of telomeres is associated with all these diseases in a dose-response fashion. But what people are not willing to make the leap is to say, well, this is a placebo. This is a... I mean, this is a panacea, because usually the word placebo and panacea have a negative connotation. But what if placebo and panacea were not negative? What if placebo was just part of the normal uh, body's ability to heal itself, first of all, which is good. If you believe something's going to work, it will tend to work. But panacea 
you know, you have to understand this is not the usual snake oil. This is not drinking, you know, deer blood or, you know, turtle horn or whatever. This is like every cell has an enzyme called telomerase. And the premise is that, as shown it's experimentally, the effect of telomerase is tripled for 14 hours. So we're not building from a legend or an idea or a magical animistic belief. This is experimentally proven. So if this, then that. And so, to answer your question, every category of cell, you know, whether it be those determining you know, cardiovascular function, skin health, vision, you know, if shortening and damage is associated with, you know, uh, poor telomerase activity, then the converse is true. You know, increased activity and youthening, if you will, should be associated with improvement in everything. And, you know, although that's not really the case for everyone and it's very hard to measure, in general, everything you would associate with getting older is reversed, which is a lot to take in, but you have to keep your eye on the ball and say, we're not talking about magic, we're talking about something that is established science. So you have to either posit that people are lying up and down the line about the existence of DNA and, you know, telomerase, or you have to at least open your mind and say, well, there might be something here. Well, the, the issue of cells dying naturally is an interesting one because it depends on your definition of the word naturally. Mm -hmm. And um, I think what this issue suggests is that maybe there's a natural mechanism that can extend life mm -hmm. uh, to a great extent. Which leads me to my next question, which is, in your opinion, what do you think is the maximum lifespan for a human as opposed to the optimum lifespan for a human? Um, the maximum lifespan appears to be just under a thousand years as stipulated by the Bible. Now, that's just some people's interpretation, but there is no reason why if you had active telomerase and good replacement stem cells, you couldn't go out that far. Now, who knows what's going to go on with our electrical wiring. Maybe some of the permanent wiring won't fly at year 200 or 300, but maximum <clears throat> shouldn't deviate that much from optimal if you have good replacement stem cells. And that's a technology that's already here. So they can get your best version of your birthday endowment of genes and put them into a brand spanking new cell and you make your own replacement kidney. So we're not talking about being 200 and looking 200. We're talking about being 200 and looking 21. So that's the paradigm shift. So if you decouple the idea with getting older, with getting infirmed, then it starts to become a different equation. But um, I hope that answers your question. I, I think that the maximum physical limitation as I discuss in my graphic novel, you start to run into questions of transhumanism. So let's say you um, are at a thousand years and, and some of the stuff is just not replaceable, right? Like no one makes Edsel parts or whatever, Victor, Victoriola or whatever. So the question is, do you add chips to your brain? Do you download partially into a computer? So this starts to raise questions of what is it to be human, you know, if... Um, you're talking about the individual lifespan. You start to get into questions of transhumanism or a transformed human. <laughs> That's way too technical, isn't it? Yeah, very theoretical or philosophical in a sense. But in terms of uh, in terms of staying human, 100% mm -hmm. uh, the original model. Yeah. Um, in your opinion, what do you think is the uh, the lifespan that will soon be with us, if not with us now, with this technology? <clears throat> Same answer, because the body is just a symphony of these mechanisms which we have increasing mastery over. So we know how to tweak the enzymes. We know how to do individualized cloning. So if, if you can get a replacement kidney for you, from you, then, you know, there's, there's, it's the same answer. You can look 21 and be 210 or even 2,100, you know. We don't know the answer to that question. Well, assuming that we don't know for sure, what is your innermost thoughts, your, your suspicions? Uh, are we close to finding the solution, or are we actually there now? I think we're there. I really do. I think that people get all excited when they read a, a meme, like the first person to live to 150 has already been born. I mean, I would take it way out beyond that. I mean, I think that um, 
people have, will have negligible senescence, which is a term popularized by one of the um, luminaries in this field, Aubrey de Grey. But there's no reason why we couldn't live thousands of years. And, and to justify that, I use the analogy of the Volvo. There's a gentleman uh, who has driven his Volvo purportedly for three million miles. And nobody thinks that's at all the least bit amazing. He orders new parts. He maintains it. You know, he doesn't abuse it. Uh, if, you know, Herb, uh, you know, crashes his car, he's dead. You know, if a Highlander from Scotland chops off my head, I'm dead. But there's no reason why we can't just maintain the body using regular technology. So I think the answer is hundreds, if not thousands of years.